Irán es uno de los países más importantes del Medio Oriente. Lo que pase ahí es clave para toda la región. Para que nos cuente cuál es la situación de los trabajadores y del pueblo iraní, vamos a charlar con un compañero luchador desde hace muchos años, el compañero Satar Ramani. Hola, Satar. Todos sabemos eh, lo fuertemente represivo del régimen iraní. ¿Podrías describir cómo era la situación política y económica antes de la pandemia? Right. Before I answer your question, I would like uh, to thank you for inviting me to this uh, interview and also a message from uh, Iranian workers. Let me just uh, pass this message. Uh, greeting and thanks for the invitation. Uh, um, uh, also, workers in Iran declare their solidarity with workers in the United States, Argentina, Brazil, to all workers in the world. The workers are only leading class, I believe, in the soul who, with their unity, will destroy the, the power of capitalism uh, ruled by barbarism, I believe. Um, to answer you, your question, um, uh, let me just start with um, uh, explaining the economic situation in Iran first. Uh, then we go from there to other uh, issues. Uh, so, um, starting with the uh, misery index in 2019, the economic growth in Iran, uh, which was reported by IMF, um, uh, it shows in 2019, misery index in Iran is 59% nearly hit an appalling uh, level of 60%. Uh, 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 in Iran. According to the International uh, Monetary Fund, IMF, as I said, in 2019, Iran growth turned negative, falling uh, as low as minus 9.5%, illustrating the depth in the economic and, and social uh, crisis in Iran, I would uh, say. Um, so uh, the GBD, uh, GDP, so GDP growth in in Iran uh, uh, in 2019, which was uh, published on October uh, 18, determined that Iran is struggling with one of the deepest economic recession in its history, and that Iran's real growth a uh, GD, GDP uh, growth for this year is minus, as I mentioned earlier, minus 9.5%. Uh, so an unprecedented level over the 31 years. Uh, over the last year, one tenth of Iranian economy simply uh, just disappeared. The average GPT uh, growth rate for all countries in the world in 2019 was 3%. Since from this perspective, Iran's economy shrunk by a 12.5% compared to the world. And also a, a, the Organization of Petroleum Exporting Countries, OPEC, monthly report shows that October 2019, the volume of Iran's uh, oil production was uh, 2.1 million barrels a day, uh, the lowest it has been over the last 40 years. Even if compared to production during 1980-88 war between Iran and Iraq, uh, after the nuclear threat took effect, Iran's oil production uh, uh, suppressed 3.8 percent million, sorry, uh, uh, barrels a day. Uh, so uh, today, uh, the, by the new threat by Trump administration, um, 
uh, the production of the oil is only 300 barrels a day. Uh, and as you know, Iran's economy complete, uh, well, uh, at least a, a high percentage dependence on, on oil production. Uh, so can the trend be reversed in Iran? The simple answer to this is yes, if it can, uh, on on paper, if Iran's oil production returned to the level of two years ago, Iran's GDP would grow by 9% as it was before. In the real world, the situation is more complicated. First of all, the, there is no sign that international tension are uh, uh, subsiding uh, or that the sanction will be lifted of any time soon. Secondly, even if the sanctions are lifted, the economy will not immediately uh, snap back to the way it was before. After the nuclear agreement went into the effect, it took about a year for the oil production to return to the, uh, the ceiling of 3.8 million barrels a day. It is reasonable to assume that this time it would be taken even longer because after their recent experience, Iran's oil customers would be uh, doubly uh, uh, cautious about returning to the market. Uh, as the saying goes, once bitten, twice shy. So if we look at the employment and underemployment, uh, unemployment in Iran. The latest official statistic uh, from Iran shows that during the Iranian calendar year, 1397 March 2018 to uh, March 2019, there were uh, 23.8 million employed people in the country. National-wide rate of unemployment stood at 12 percent. This is again official uh, uh, number they're giving. And the participation rate, the sum of the employed workers divided by the working age population, uh, reached 40.5 percent. Around 70, I would say 57 million people who live under the poverty line, these 70, uh, 57 million are those that are Iranian. Um, based on the Iranian Research uh, Center, believe will fall under the poverty line over the course of a 19-13 Iranian calendar, 1398-99, that means 2019-2020. Uh, uh, minimum wage in Iran uh, uh, last year increased by 21%. Uh, uh, started in March 2020. Uh, after three time failing meeting, a uh, workers from trade union, they call themselves trade union, but they are not, they're belonging to the or fraction of the government. They decided to increase the uh, salary by uh, or minimum wages uh, uh, from last year. Uh, so the minimum wages is uh, 15.5 million riyals, which is uh, uh, $94 dollar, uh, a per month. 18.34 million riyals, uh, or $113 a year. That's the salary basic uh, minimum wages in Iran, uh, $113. Uh, but compared to the food prices and uh, inflation and everything, that 10 times under the poverty line. So they set workers' monthly allowance as 4 million riyals again to help, but that is like $24.8 uh, a month. Um, uh, if we go to the uh, other side, a uh, political side, 
uh, the rampant corruption in Islamic regime, if you look at this way, the Islamic regime uh, of Iran thinks that it could weather the storm using the Trump administration's reimposition of creeping sanctions on the Iranian economy to divert the attention of mass and rally uh, then behind behind them uh, behind it against the imperialism this has been the key strategy of the regime since the inspection but while the sanctions have certainly had an effect on certain layers in particular upper middle class the vast majority of poor and working uh, people are in desperate situation at the same time uh, the rampant corruption and the greed at the top of the regime have uh, alienated even the most uh, loyal of its uh, supporters. Quisieras agregar algo más? I would say capitalism in Iran is at a its a dead end. Capitalism uh, cannot uh, tolerate the demands of the working class uh, uh, or their independent organizations. Iran's economy is running on minimal capacity, isolated from the world market, which itself in, uh, is in deep economic crisis. In Iran, the crisis continues to escalate with inflation, unemployment and the coronavirus pandemic growing rapidly. Meanwhile, the rich keep sucking the blood of the working workers and poor uh, stealing and uh, scheming uh, their way to obscene the riches. All they give uh, to the workers in return are empty promises. Um, there was general, uh, well, general strike uh, uh, and a street process together, I would say, uh, it would be, uh, would be a, the solution for working class in Iran, if you in, look at it in political side of it. The working class must put its faith only in its own strength to defend working class and to continue widen the struggle, the strike committees should be connected at a national level and the preparation must be made to escalate this struggle all the way to the general strike and street protest. Um, and to end uh, the structural uh, embezzlement and uh, I would say, the national struggle must be organized on the basis of a common program for real wage increase, payment of the back wages, uh, insurance for all, an end to embezzlement, uh, an end to privatization for uh, the uh, renationalization of the big private companies, I would say. I, I would say only so a socialist revolution would be the answer. Ultimately, uh, the weak uh, crisis-ridden Iranian capitalist system cannot afford these reforms. And the only socialist revolution on the workers' council control can uh, bring uh, uh, an end to the horrors of the capitalism. En noviembre del 2019, una ola de protestas conmocionó al país. ¿Podrías decirnos cuáles fueron las demandas fundamentales en ese proceso y cuál fue la respuesta del régimen y la situación después de las protestas? Well, the basic, uh, as I explained it previously, unemployment, wage under the poverty line, uh, these are the reasons for the protest. Uh, systematic corruption, women's basic rights and equality, and government financial embezzlement, uh, freedom of having workers, independent organization, freedom of the strike, protest, and speech, and media. These are the basic things uh, 
especially young people uh, uh, came to the street uh, in uh, 2019. Uh, Iran hiked the petrol prices. What happened? In a surprise overnight announcement on November 15, Iran hiked petrol prices by up to 300% and introduced a new uh, uh, rationing system. This protest appeared to be the most serious since the uh, sporadic demonstration in December 2017 and January 2018 in which many were killed by the Islamic uh, anti-protest uh, security guard. November 16 and 17, the situation in Iran became difficult to monitor on November 16, when the government appeared to nearly shut down internet connection for the general uh, uh, populace. By November 17, hundreds of thousands of people, workers, students, teachers, unemployment, young uh, uh, people, university graduates, had joined demonstration across some hundred towns and cities. Most of the uh, in nation one on unrest concentrated in uh, neighborhoods and cities populated by low income and working class families. Well, it was reported that 1,100 uh, young, uh, old age, and employed people were killed by armed security guard within four days or three days, according to the. New York Times in the southwest city of a uh, Mahshar alone witnessed the medical uh, personnel said Islamic Revolutionary Guard uh, Corps members surrounded, shot, and killed 4,200 demonstrated uh, deaths, mostly uh, unarmed young men in. A marsh where they had sought a refuge. Iran's Supreme Leader Ayatollah Ali Khamenei denounced the demonstration as thugs, and its president Hassan Rouhani warned to the, that the government uh, uh, surveillance would empower uh, 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 repay reprisal I, I would say against all who participated. ¿Cómo se relaciona con la situación general de la región en términos de revueltas? Por ejemplo, lo que sucede en el Líbano y otras partes de la región. Let me just uh, explain the working class potential first in Iran. I I think working class uh, of Iran has a long tradition of militancy of and internationalism. Now it has been badly suppressed by reactionary, uh, theoretic, uh, uh, theocratic uh, regime through the working class movement lacks a coherent organization to advance his demands, let alone to have a party uh, to organize their movement in order to put real pressure upon the regime at, at the moment. However, the working class movement in Iran has an enormous potential to organize and to create solid opposition to this reactionary regime and even uh, topple it and become the real alternative, not only to the Islamic regime, but also with far-reaching impact on the region, perhaps a, as far as Iraq, Turkey, Lebanon, Greece, and even uh, southern uh, uh, Europe. 331 strikes and demonstration uh, reported in August 2020. A wave of protest, uh, I think, is sweeping uh, Iran. There were three, these 331 strike and demonstration, uh, which was reported in August, 
uh, involving all sectors from the oil and gas sector to students in the uh, 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 universities, uh, farmers and others in the oil and gas sector, the workers uh, spontaneously uh, coordinated the strike uh, with common demands, which at its height at the beginning of the September 2020 involved 25,000 across the uh, whole country. An uh, example of this uh, strike, uh, sugar cane and uh, steel workers uh, strike a uh, in Iran. The sugarcane strike uh, lasts about 70 days. Uh, I would explain a little bit about this, which was, I think, the most important strike, uh, you know, apart from other strikes like uh, 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 car industries uh, and uh, uh, other uh, uh, working class factories. Uh, unemployment and other, but but this a uh, half tap of sugar cane strike was, I think, uh, one of the most important one this year. Between November 2018 and 2019, two major uh, strike by the workers, um, Iran National Steel Industry Groups, uh, INSIG, in the city of Ahwaz, and half tap cane sugar, uh, Argo Industrial Company, in such uh, uh, in Shush, sorry, the, the city name is uh, Shush, took place uh, simultaneously. Half tap strike started again in June 2020 and, and continued for, as I say, uh, it took 70 days. Um, workers in both industries have been fighting against privatization. Um, of their uh, respective companies and unpaid wages. This was the major demand. In addition, workers have been calling for removal of uh, corrupt management and uh, dominant, uh, dominant of what uh, steel workers have called the mafia in their uh, industries. Half tap and steel workers are also protesting against a against the government's free market policy, which have led to austerity measures, massive corruption, and ever increasing job insecurity. Workers workers have called for cancellation of privatization of these major industries that have been beneficial to the whole country and and the return of the in, uh, in industries to the public sector with more control and administration by uh, workers and their elected representative. Although not necessarily a full uh, con consensus uh, among all workers, uh, the formation of independent workers council became a popular aim for a for the sugarcane half tap factory. A, so we, uh, the remarkable resistance of women, I would say youth and various section of the professional uh, is, is tarata and uh, intellectuals, as well as several major riots over illegal buildings in shanty towns and ceaseless strike and sitting in the industrial sectors, they uh, suggest that perhaps for the first time in modern Iranian uh, history, the people have taken political initiatives without coordination and and organize organize uh, leadership. While the workers' uh, in, initial demand was to receive their uh, unpaid wages, it has now become the uh, the rationalization uh, a, a re rationalization, I would say, of the company by 
uh, to be run by the by a council workers representative or at least run by the government but controlled by a, the workers representative qué perspectivas ves para la situación en el futuro uh, the question is uh, whether the revolution repeat the same mistake they made i mean the future revolution made in 1979 a revolution which a, a, a swept off a, a shah regime in iran uh, are we going to repeat the same mistake we made in 1979 can the iranian working class led the revolution the foreign opposition and part of the democratic opposition have international support but the west and the trump, trump administration i would say need the ruling regime in iran as an open enemy and secret friends they don't want to change the regime they want to keep it in this way and try to keep the regime in in the region for political uh, 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 equation the regime of uh, the islamic uh, regime of iran uh, uh, or islamic capitalist regime of iran uh, is in a state of disarray that it can no longer continue to rule the continuing repression in prison in imprisonment torture, explosion, threats, and street killing. More than 80% of Iranians do not want this regime. For example, in the last parliamentary election, only 20% of the population voted for, uh, uh, for the election. Uh, the, so this is what I think, uh, whether working, uh, in iran iran is in a state that a uh, situation will change but we don't know we can't confirm who if the another revolution happen who will be in the power whether the working class take the lead or a uh, uh, they uh, uh, again they do the revolution but uh, the uh, bourgeois opposition in abroad or inside the country uh, uh, will take the power from them. Satar, la verdad que ha sido muy pero muy interesante todo lo que nos has contado. Te agradecemos mucho la entrevista y seguiremos en contacto. Esto ha sido todo por hoy. Espero que el programa les haya resultado interesante. Síganos a través de nuestras redes sociales, de nuestra página web y nos estamos viendo próximamente para otra emisión de Panorama Internacional, el programa de la Liga Internacional Socialista.